yes, I am wearing a wig because, I'll be honest, I do not want to brush my hair today. Hello, I'm Shell and I'm a cosplayer. If you are new to my channel, welcome, or if you're a subscriber, welcome back to celebrate reaching 1,000 subscribers on this channel, which is insane, frankly. Thank you so much. I am doing a Q&A video today. A couple weeks ago I told you in one of my videos that I'll be doing a Q&A, and then I also posted it on the new community tab, which we recently unlocked. Very exciting! So I have written down all of your questions and I am ready to answer them. I'm also ready to eat yogurt because probiotics. First things first, what got you into cosplay? The simple answer is my friends. I was always nerdy growing up, but by the time high school rolled around, I had a friend group that went to conventions and cosplayed together, and they made it look like so much fun, so naturally I wanted to be part of it. What was your first cosplay? And another question, when did you start cosplay? I'm going to answer both of these at the same time because it's kind of one answer. So like I said, I learned what cosplay was in high school, but it wasn't actually until the end of high school when I was a senior that I started cosplaying. I gotta put my yogurt down. Oh, oh, I don't have any, I don't have a spot to put my yogurt! I had friends that had been going to conventions for a couple years by that point, but they were all into this one fandom that I couldn't really get into. I tried so hard, but it just wasn't for me. So I didn't really feel comfortable going with them when they'd all be cosplaying from this one fandom and I'd be doing something completely different. But then I learned that one of my childhood friends was going to this convention called Anime Boston. So I messaged her and I was like, hey, can I tag along with you? And this friend is like one of the sweetest, kindest people I've ever met. So of course she said yes, and she took me to Anime Boston 2016 with her, and that is my dear friend Kayla, who you see in many of my vlogs because we still go to conventions together. For Anime Boston, I knew I wanted to cosplay, but it was short notice and I was kind of just getting into it. So I had to think of a character that was fairly simple, and I ended up choosing Honey Lemon from Big Hero 6. In about a month, I managed to put the cosplay together, I went to Anime Boston, I had the time of my life, and from then on, I was in. I was doing cosplay forever. <laughs> Ooh, this, this next one is, is a long one. What was the first anime you ever watched? If you started cosplaying when you were still in school, did your parents allow you to cosplay? If not, how did you get them to eventually accept it? Also, how are you literally so canon? <laughs> I'm not sure what canon means in this context because like the only canon I am of anything is like canon shell. <laughs> but thank you! <laughs> so piece by piece, the first anime I ever watched was Oran High School Host Club. I saw it on Netflix, I was curious, I watched it, I loved it. I still love it. <laughs> like I said, I did start cosplaying in high school, and when I started, my parents definitely thought it was weird, <laughs> but there were a lot of things that I think made it easier for them to kind of understand and accept it. The first being that I had always been a nerd, um, I had sewn for years before that, and actually all throughout high school I was head of wardrobe for the drama club, so I was like leading a costume crew. So they were very used to me making costumes, just not costumes for myself. <laughs> I think what definitely helped the first time around was that I was cosplaying a very familiar character. We had all seen Big Hero 6 as a family, they knew who Honey Lemon was, it wasn't strange or unfamiliar to them, and they thought it was just like a fun thing for me to do. I think it would have been a lot harder if I had done a cosplay from like Danganronpa or something, you know, something that they had no scope and no reference of understanding to, um, then probably it would have been a bit harder for them. But over the years, as I've, you know, cosplayed more and created more and got really into photography and video, honestly my parents have been insanely supportive. It is so wonderful and I'm so grateful. <laughs> Next up, what fandoms are you in? What characters would you like to cosplay? I think it'd be easier to say what fandoms I am not in. <laughs> I have a ton of different interests and a ton of different series that I love. 
I would say my biggest ones are probably The Adventure Zone and She-Ra. I'd say like I'm in those fandoms, but there's so many things I love and I'm interested in. For characters I would like to cosplay, I really want to cosplay Katarina Kleis from My Next Life as a Villainess. It's such an underrated anime. Like, I need everyone to watch it. It makes me laugh my ass off. I also want to cosplay Tulip from Infinity Train, which is another super underrated series in my opinion. And I think I would like to cosplay another person from the Adventure Zone. I cosplay Loop currently, but I'd really like to cosplay Danny. <laughs> Do you have any pets? Yes! I have a dwarf hamster. Her name is Basil. <laughs> favorite animal? My favorite animal are seals, specifically harbor seals. I've loved them forever, I can't explain why. <laughs> have you ever thought of playing a game as a character, like playing a horror game as Sonya Nevermind for spooky season? Yes. Um, I, I definitely have. I don't want to say much more because I kind of want it to be a surprise, but there may be a video coming to you eventually with that exact theme. <laughs> Are you planning on cosplaying anyone from My Hero Academia? If so, who? Honestly, I have never been into My Hero Academia. I tried watching it a few years ago when it first came out and it just wasn't my cup of tea. And uh, to be completely transparent with you, the fandom scares the crap out of me. So I don't have any current plans to cosplay any of the characters, but I would be open to it if someday, like, there was a character I really related to in the series. What are your favorite Halloween movies? Good question. I think I'm gonna post this just in time to miss Halloween. So I'll say my favorite, like, Halloween-y movie is Twitches from Disney Channel, but I have a lot of favorite horror movies like Triangle, Hush, and pure. All of those are really good horror movies. A few questions. Ooh, multi-part. What cosplays are you planning on doing in the future? What is your favorite Danganronpa game? What is your favorite Danganronpa character? Cosplays I am planning to do in the future include Katarina, like I said, from My Next Life as a Villainess, Tulip from Infinity Train, uh, I really need to finish Greg from Over the Garden Wall, I've, I've literally been planning that cosplay for like over two years because I keep wanting to shoot it in autumn but I, I still haven't finished the skirt because I, I hate sewing. <laughs> I haven't played any of the Danganronpa games. I've only watched the anime of the first season. So if I had to say like a favorite series, I would say the first one. And for my favorite Danganronpa character, Kirigiri. I love a smart girl. <laughs> What are your top three dream photo shoot locations and what cosplays do you want to shoot there? This is a really good question, wow. Okay, the first would definitely be a castle. So like, you know, like a beautiful castle interior with beautiful hallways and architecture and I'd love to do Princess Bean and Katarina there. The second would be, I've always wanted to do a photo shoot for Supergirl in like a city skyline but I just, I'm too embarrassed to just walk around Boston as Supergirl. Um, the third would be, oh, my dream photo shoot has always been to cosplay the Heathers and Veronica, like get a group to cosplay together and do a photo shoot in a school with like lockers and halls. Oh, I just, I love that concept so much. I, I want to see it happen someday. <laughs> have you done a male cosplay? If so, then who? I have. <laughs> Um, I don't talk about it, uh, and I don't have any pictures of it, because I've only ever done one male cosplay, and it just like made me uncomfortable. I just don't feel very comfortable cosplaying male characters, but uh, way back in 2017 during the Yuri on Ice craze, I cosplayed Victor uh, in his, you know, Young Worlds Championship skating outfit. <laughs> don't eat lunch while you're filming, kids. What keeps you motivated to continue doing cosplay slash YouTube? Congrats on 1K. Thank you. Oh, I, I really can't express how excited and grateful I am that you guys have gotten me to this point. It's so amazing. What keeps me motivated is a very good question because I think like many people, there have been times in my years of cosplaying where I have wanted to do absolutely nothing related to cosplay whatsoever. And I've just been sick of it. <laughs> 
My favorite part of cosplay has always been the people and getting to meet people and interact with them and make friends who have like the same interests as me. And I've been honored to meet so many amazing, talented, kind, skilled, creative people through cosplay. It's, ugh, it, it's so fulfilling. And then I like to kind of like give back to that community by creating content and I feel really fulfilled when people enjoy something I make. So what motivates me the most about cosplaying YouTube is the people and interacting with people like you guys. Have you finished Danganronpa 3? No. <laughs> Are you planning on cosplaying any more characters from Danganronpa? Yes! I really want to cosplay Sonia. She's so pretty and I want to take pictures with my hamster as her and oh I think she's just so cute so I really want to cosplay her. <laughs> I also, and, I also, and, and this makes me like lose it laughing to think about it because um, if you've known me for a while, you know that I tend to pick the weirdest character in a series to cosplay. So like, for example, I, I cosplay a character from Seven Deadly Sins and Seven Deadly Sins is full of wonderful characters with amazing designs and there's like so many options for you to cosplay from. And out of all of those characters, when I joined a Seven Deadly Sins group, I chose to cosplay the pig. Because <laughs> I really like Hawk. <laughs> so another cosplay I want to do from Danganronpa is Monokuma, the bear. Because apparently I just, apparently I'm, I'm like a closet furry, I don't know. <laughs> On a bit more serious note, next question, has anything bad happened to you in cosplay? Yes. F frankly, I've been cosplaying for four years, and if anything bad hadn't happened already, I'd be astounded. Um, I've been catcalled in cosplay, I've been harassed in cosplay, I've been stalked online by people I encountered at conventions, and, you know, it's not fun when those things happen but nothing has ever been so bad to dissuade me from cosplaying and make me want to stop. And I am lucky that I have wonderful friends and followers who really support me and can really back me up when things like that happen. So yes, bad things happen, but I have many people behind me and that's what matters. <laughs> is there anything you're looking forward to with your cosplays? This is a good question. I would say what I tend to look forward to most with cosplays is photos as them because photography is such a beautiful way to really encapsulate your work and really add aura and atmosphere to the character and the costume you've created. So I really look forward to photo shoots, um, especially with Katarina. She's the one I'm the most excited for, honestly. I, I just love the series so much, so I'm very much looking forward to cosplaying with her. Do you have a favorite cosplay? This is a tough question because, you know, I love all of my cosplays for different reasons, but Mabel is my favorite cosplay to wear to conventions because I get to goof around and give people stickers and like be super energetic and friendly and it's just so much fun to be Mabel. What cosplay was hardest to make? That's a good question. I struggled a lot with my she sword because that was the first prop I ever made, but I think the hardest in terms of like time and effort and planning was definitely my ballet ladybug cosplay. And I pretty much handmade everything I was wearing and I am not a seamstress. <laughs> so not all of it fit very well and there were some safety pins here and there, but it was a lot of fun and I really love it. What is your favorite prop? That's a hard question. I really only have like the one prop is my she sword, but I've also made a plush of Waddles and a plush of Bill Cipher. Let me grab them. This, this is my Bill plush I made. Uh, I made him probably about a year or two after I started cosplaying. And I'm really proud of him because I did him all in like one afternoon and he kind of has like a s interesting detail I did to make him look like a pyramid. So I'm really proud of this guy and I like him a lot. What cosplay are you proudest of? 
That is another hard question, dang. I think the cosplay I'm proudest of would have to be my princess ball gown wedding dress <laughs> for being from Disenchantment. It was a total labor of love. You know, this dress is only in the show for maybe 10 minutes total out of a show with two full seasons. The base dress is actually a Cinderella Halloween costume I bought on Amazon and then I modified the hell out of it and added all of these things and made all of these alterations to the skirts and the hems and the bows and it was a lot of work. I spent a lot of time in my basement hand painting fabric but the pictures I have of that cosplay are some of my favorite and I'm really proud of it. What is your favorite anime? I have so many favorite anime. Oh, I love New Game. Uh, my friend just got me watching Lucky Star, which has been so fun to watch. I really love My Next Life as a Villainess. I really want people to watch it. I know I've talked about it like four times in this video. Please take that as a sign you need to watch it. <laughs> What would your dream home be like? Ooh, it's a good question. My life goal is to own like a log cabin with, you know, big windows to let lots of light in, uh, with a nice little kitchen and little library room and little garden out back. I'm, I'm just a cottage core bitch, what can I say? <laughs> what is a cosplay you're planning to do in the future? I think I've answered this a few times already, but I forgot. Uh, there's another one. I'm going to be cosplaying Cass from Rapunzel's Adventures. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, tips on wig washing. I can't seem to find any consistent tips that actually help. I don't know if I'm going to be able to help you there, friend, because I have washed approximately one wig in all of my cosplay years. <laughs> If the reason behind washing it is like there's a ton of hairspray or product in it, I found that I'm usually able to comb those out with a really fine tooth comb if I kind of go over them over and over again. When I do wash a wig, I kind of just fill my bathtub with a shallow amount of warmish water and I throw in some baby shampoo and I just kind of swish it around in there. <laughs> Um, one thing that might help a lot is one of those plastic wig stands, so that way when you want your wig to dry out, you can put it on top of that so kind of air can circulate around it instead of just like lying it flat on a towel. So those were all of your questions that I sincerely hope I answered to the best of my ability. Thank you guys for watching and thank you again so much for 1000 subscribers. If you ever have a question, you can just ask me in the comments or over on Instagram and I'll answer them anytime. It doesn't need to be a whole video. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week and bye!